Hey, Julian. Hi. Hello. Hey, Karen. Hi. Are you on mute? I can't hear you. Oh. Maybe I'm on mute. No, no. You're on mute. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good. Good. Can you hear me? Now, yes, I can do. Oh, good. Awesome. Great to see you guys. You too. Looks like you've got a bit of sunshine there, Miro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like uh, we didn't have any, and all of a sudden, when we have to record, guess what happens? There's a lot of sunshine. <laughs> so it's all, it's all good. So how have you been? Yeah, shall I start? Sure, hmm. I've got the little PowerPoint. Um, I don't yeah, know I just know. was looking, looking at that. Yeah. See it. So let's just. Um, yeah. what's, what's your idea at the moment, then, um, Miro? Do you want to kick straight off, or do you want to? Are we going to sort of? How are we going to approach our meeting today? Yeah, let's just go go for it. I mean, we have thirty yeah. minutes, and yeah. uh, and I think it'd be interesting for the audience to hear our what's our opinion about. Uh, dealing with stress and anxiety, how to cope with it. And I think this is the uh, insights series topic number one. And mm -hmm. I'm glad that we can do it together because we've worked on our book together. And I have it handy right here. So I think that um, if you want to start off, uh, Julian, you're welcome. Yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think this is. Um... <sighs> You know, coping with stress, it's, it's almost like it's been going on for quite a long time. There's a different sort of level of stress than we might face if we're maybe heavily involved in a project or, or some, some particular moment of change. And I think that for me is the, the key element here. It's a, there's a whole line of different types of stress which have been kind of building maybe one on top of the other. So it's quite difficult in a way to pinpoint or to say, you know, COVID stress, what's that? Um, for some people with, you know, business uh, concerns, of course, it's going to have a different kind of an effect amount. But I think the same thing's true. There is a mounting quality to it, you know, sort of overlay of different types of um, maybe qualities of stress. That's my initial, initial Awesome. Thing. Awesome. What do you think, Karen? How do you see um, when major changes happen and how do we cope with stress and, and any anxiety, your examples or your experiences? Yeah, I, th I think from the initial thing that I was very aware of was the <sighs> trying to work out what exactly was going on nobody understood and the reactions like from a business point of view people stopped paying the bills um jobs went on hold you didn't you you were trying to manage your staff settle them down at the same time you were still feeling the anxiety yourself um, and it was because it was knowing you had to be a rock for your staff. Mm. And then on the sidelines, you've got all your own issues going on that you have to deal with as well. So mm. I think from initially that was quite hard. So it was keeping yourself grounded and say, yes, this is going on, but it's like, um, You just go in, you're, you're moving at, um, at the same, well, you're running at the same time as trying to keep everything calm mm. and making sense of it. So it's the ambiguity of it. It was, mm. it was so deep um, and there were so many possible scenarios to it and thoughts of how it possibly could become. No, none of us expected it to go on this long. Um, yeah. But all but at the same time, we were all we were all learning. We were yep. all learning how to manage it 
from our perspectives, from other people's perspectives, and it just it was quite amazing actually how people have coped. You know, just talking to people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and thank God, like we've pursued coaching because that I know for myself, it's given me the skills to yeah. uh, better weather the storm when it actually did happen last year and being in a state of shock, not knowing kind of like what happened to you, both of you, uh, not knowing what's next. And I actually had a tendency to withdraw. And I know that everyone reacted in a different way, but uh, to me, when COVID happened, uh, I kind of, I almost wanted to have some quiet time. So the timing for me was almost um, not perfect, but it was good because I was exposed a lot prior to it, like talking to a lot of people. And then all of a sudden there was complete shutdown, mm -hmm. which was a really uh, an interesting experience. I mean, it was complete. Everything stopped. We didn't know what's going to happen next. But I needed that break in a way. Um, so that was, um, so maybe that's how I react to stress because some people withdraw and I know I, know I do mm -hmm. when major changes like COVID um, happened. That's what I noticed about myself. How about you guys? What did you notice? Yeah. Well, I think um, in most of the, I mean, this conversation has been going on, I think. Um, you know, with the people close to you who are in similar situations to you and also, you know, when you're lucky enough to meet people who are in, in perhaps in different situations in different countries and dealing with things in different ways and maybe different rhythms of, of what COVID has actually done. So, you know, in some, sometimes you're, you're talking to someone in another time or another country that's having a completely different experience than you are. And I think that's been a big help for me is you know is to actually having a broader look at what's going on because it can be quite you know you can be focused in very very sharply on you know the money's not coming in or the what's going to happen next and um is it you know i guess the fears start rising that you're not going to be able to cope or so, you know sooner or later it's 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 going to be too much you know and i think for me, one of the coping mechanisms was actually, yeah, you know, actually speaking to people, perhaps in another, in another situation, and seeing that things are moving forward. You know, maybe it's imperceivable in some spaces, and then suddenly there's a big jump. But there's almost like, um, it's trying to understand COVID almost like as a, as a life form. Um, it's not necessarily out to get us like some predator, but it but it has its it has its life form. And we can, you know, we can try and understand it a little bit. Uh, yeah. We can try and find ways to, um, yeah, I think try and understand ourselves through it. What does, what's this experience doing to me? What's it doing to the people around us? And and I think that helps quite a lot to take away especially, you know, the, the, the heavyweight stress of perhaps, um, you know, people are not well around you or, you know, children are, I, I work in education uh, quite often. So, you know, the feeling is there's a lot of young people um, on, the, on the front line here, you know, not getting the education, parents are stressed and trying to see it as being kind of like something we're moving through and, uh, and yeah, way of coping. Yeah, and I yeah, and I agree with you, Julian, because there is a lot of uh, fear. I think that's uh, the, the fear is a number one driver, especially not knowing because the virus is hidden, and so we, a lot of people it's, still to this day it's hard to manage like what's going to happen next. Uh, there are vaccines and whatnot now, but. A year ago, there was not a lot, and even now, people are stressed about it because um, we all, we almost can talk. It's almost it is post COVID world, which will also bring major changes, which will also bring a lot of reactions. And what what is next? What do we do next? <clears throat> so, Karen, how, so from your perspective, being a business owner, coach, and a business owner, how do you see it? 
I, I do believe that we've we have evolved through through the time the last year and people feel in, in my line of work they feel a bit more secure and more able to just carry on we've got things to do carry on so I probably so that happens March April time so it's probably into July August that people started not being quite so fearful of the money side of things and and so we started to jobs started to come about again um there was a lot of, uh, I'm quite curious to the virus because I do believe that it's something that is here for a purpose and we have to listen and we have to change and I mean, the, the roads were empty first time round and now, Shocking. They're, now they're, they're getting busy again. And that worries me because there's this opportunity for us to start working from home wherever possible and carry on into the future to keep the traffic on the roads down. Mm -hmm. um, and it, the blue of the sky, it's just so blue. I guess that's a positive, less yeah. pollution. Yeah, less pollution, um, hearing the birds, nature having a chance to do its own thing. Um, yeah, it's. I think there's quite a lot of positives, even though there's been tremendous sadness throughout this. And if, if I may ask you, so in your previous career, you were working as a nurse, right? Yes. So did your career prepare you for this in a way? Because um, have you seen it before or, or and how well, did coaching nothing help Nothing like you? this. Nothing like this. No, but, um, you know, obviously there, there are moments where, you know, people in, on the wards become like diarrhea and sickness. You get a ward full of diarrhea and sickness, you have to deal with it. And it'll just go, it'll just spread like wildfire. So it's, um, I've got, I was, I'd quite like to have been on the front line, to be honest with you. But that's the nurse in me. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the challenge of it. I think the thing that sort of resonated with what you were just saying there, Karen, is this idea that um, perhaps we're in a, it, I mean, I think some people are like this quite quickly and, and some people fall on it a little bit later, but, you know, opportunities mm. are always there, you know, and I think some of the work that we were doing as coaches is to, you know, to somehow help people to see that opportunities are always there. You know, and I think that uh, releasing energy through conversations, through, you know, like making, talking to people, finding out, getting more information, getting more perspectives, um, understanding mm -hmm. um, that even in the difficult moments, and I, I don't want to liken COVID to some sort of world war effect, but it, it, it has, it has a sort of had a global um, a global wave, if you like, of, of, of cause and effect, where it's left some people perhaps high and dry, some people it's affected very badly, other people. But the idea that there are opportunities, mm. and um, maybe that's 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 you know that's where where we should start to be thinking about how to cope with some of the stresses of COVID. It's actually come away from it a little bit in terms of it's happened to me or it's happening to me or it's you know it's going on around me but actually you know what can I do you know what can I do to look forward to to, to think creatively perhaps in my niche or what I'm or maybe it means you know maybe changing some of the things that I did before uh, but there isn't, you know, there, there is a sense when I'm even talking to young people now who are thinking, well, you know, it's, if I come out of this 
with more dis self-discipline. If I come out of this with, you know, instead of listening to others, but actually listening to myself and, and making, making, making it happen for me, because I've been neglected in my schoolwork or I'm not getting the same sort of support that I used to have, but then I'll be in a very favorable position actually um, to do well. But it's down to me to make those kind of steps to look at my, you know, look at my, what I can do. So I think in some ways the, the idea of coping with, with stresses, there, there may be a point where, you know, you, you can step aside a little bit and go, well, okay, this might be a moment of opportunity. There might be spaces. There might be, you know, where there were no opportunities before. Absolutely. It does create a lot of opportunities for people. And it's interesting, you know, and we went to school together for a year in Cambridge and we studied about this that, and we initially talked about it, that people will freeze. And a lot of people froze when this major change happened last year, not even thinking about any opportunities. But now I agree with you that there are many opportunities, but we have to be open to see them. And I think that's why we, we wanted to talk about this, because I think a lot of people are still or they might still be feeling um, stressed or frozen or not being able to keep moving forward. But I think uh, it's important to talk about it. And the three of us, we've been collaborating for three years. And I think that sometimes we were stuck during our process, but we found a way of writing a book collaborating on a, on a book, but we found a way to move forward. And I think that's, um, um, I think that's an important skill to have um, and try to, um, try to keep moving forward. Yeah, I think perhaps the collaborative spirit, I don't know whether you uh, will talk about it a little bit, Karen, but I think from my perspective, you know, that was the key to it all. And I've said this many, many times, you know, we, we underestimate the power of the team, you know. So even if we're, um, these are some of the things as well that in coaching, you try and help people to see that they're involved with others. And, and there's, you know, there's a team possibility maybe for them to, to gain the kind of support they're going to need because, yeah, that's it. You know, everybody will, it's a natural phase of let's say um dealing with change is to be stuck and that's a pivotal point what are you going to do with that moment are you gonna you know sit down and cover your head with a cloth and say or are you going to reach out you know yeah. um stand up and you know reach out and i think you know about you karen how how, how do you see that uh, yeah i'm I believe that when when you've experienced a trauma, and for some, you know, a lot of people have had the trauma of this, there there's a there's such a need to to talk about it so that you can process it. And I think coaching really helps that. Um, it's because it gives you that safe environment to be able to express exactly how it was for you. And there's someone actually willing and keen to listen to you. Um, and I don't think until you, until you can take yourself through that process, it's very difficult to let go of what you've experienced. And there needs to be a letting go to be able to move forward. That's exactly it. And I think sometimes you don't want to let go of because it, it's painful. Yeah. It's not comfortable. And initially we mentioned that everyone reacted in a different way. And, and to, um, to Julian's point, I think collaborating is really important. And three of us are an example of that. We've created our little tribe, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And sometimes um, we agreed, sometimes we disagreed, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we had a goal to achieve and we did it. Mm. And was it a lot of work? Work, yes, but there was a lot of support too. Mm. And I think what Julian said, collaboration is really important. And 
And I think that now, to your point, Karen, a lot of people are left isolated and almost fearing of reaching out. So that's why we're talking. We want to encourage people to start talking. Well, I think it's a, you know, I think there's, there's some challenges. I'm seeing quite, uh, you know, something where I don't know what it's like in, in Canada at the moment, but there are a lot of people that have been on furlough. Well, they've been, you know, encouraged to, well, they've been supported really um, to do nothing or to do very little. And that's been double-edged sword for many people because they've, you know, they've been told basically to do nothing, uh, which is not necessarily a, a good thing. Okay, they've been supported, but coming out of that is, um, has for some people been quite difficult, you know. Now I've got to go back to work. I've got to get back to that stress and that strain. Maybe how people felt before COVID, you know, maybe my job wasn't that good. Maybe I was really struggling with my profession. Maybe all the normal things, you know, that we actually shelved uh, at that point will will return, you know. And I think that those are those are things that we probably in coaching we're going to be have to be aware of. Is that there was life before COVID, and there were issues before COVID, which were being covered up by, you know, years maybe or processions of of layers of stresses which we were coping with. Uh, we, you know, it was a natural uh, kind of level of, mm. of stress which maybe needed to be dealt with. And those things maybe haven't gone away. You know, they're, they're maybe still in there. Exactly. And and we don't wanna... Yeah, sorry. No, that's okay. Like we don't want to sweep anything underneath the rug. And I think that's, to your, that's exactly what, may, what might have happened before that someone or people weren't happy with their jobs. And now the same thing is happening in Canada where a lot of people are receiving help from the government because people have either lost their jobs or they cannot go back to work or they, their hours have changed. And so it's very similar. I'm aware, I'm, I'm mindful of time. We have five minutes left, but we can also go for an extra five, minute, five minutes. Um, I would like to start, if you guys don't mind, with summarizing um, the coping strategies that you would, you've experienced yourself or what, what you would recommend or given what, what has happened and it's still happening. Um, who would like to start? Well, I, I think my coping mechanisms <laughs> are is, is meditation and grounding. Meditation and so grounding. That, yeah, so that allows me to pause so that when I then step forward, my mind is able to think clearly. And, and I, I do like a challenge, so I will step in and try and work out what it is I've got to do. I love to learn what's needed. So um, by having that ability to meditate and ground and do it very quickly enables me to keep moving forward. Excellent. Yeah. How about you, Julian? Yeah, I think it's um, on that, you know, that ground level of, of strategy. Um, yeah, I can't think of a better thing than, than reaching out and talking to somebody. You know, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I've enjoyed dog walks. You know, those have been really powerful for me in these dark days with, with people, you know, friends just getting out there and, and just talking through things. And I think that that's where it needs to begin, you know, needs to accepting the situation and reaching out and, and talking. I think there's no better way to start than that, personally. I think those people that perhaps need more professional types of, you know, conversations. Um, the, you know, the coaching hour, as it were, is so valuable so-called 45 minutes of sitting down in a, in a really focused space with someone who's just there for you and that's got help you know kind of skills uh, for helping right there and then and in the moment I think many people don't realize but that that small investment can be a huge 
set, you know, setting off point. That's, uh, I know it sounds like that's exactly what a coach should be saying, but that's why I'm in this business. I think that that it's not about hours and hours of talking through stuff. It's really just sitting down and using that as a springboard to go to the very next step. And um, it's done, you know, that's what's happened to me time and time again, whether it's with dog walking friend that I've, I trust and, and if not with a coaching, uh, you know, outlet, which, which uh, will, will be that focus for you. Um, yeah, that's, that's. Exactly, because it's an objective ear, if you will, someone yeah. who is not uh, emotionally in, uh, invested with us. But they, they, are, they can be our guide and help us um, uh, hear ourselves and hear our thoughts. Um, on my, what I've done personally and how I coped with um, the past year was actually similar to Karen. I've meditated a lot. I did talk to other people like yourself, but I, but also I've talked, I've spoken to myself, if you will. I'm not, and I'm not crazy, okay? Um, but sometimes I have these moments where I have to speak to myself to hear my, hear my voice. Um, funny enough, I actually, I would lit a candle quite often, like, I don't know why. Uh, so, and I focused a lot on noticing. So that's what I actually, uh, when I spoke to my clients, um, I really encouraged them to start noticing uh, what's happening around them, noticing their emotions versus analyzing, because when we analyze, we can, it's a rabbit hole, right? That it just goes on and on and we get even more stressed and more anxious. So rather than do that, I was actually trying to observe and notice how, you know, how did my body react, for example? Where is the stress in my, in my body? Am I eating more or less? Am I sleeping longer or less? Uh, stuff like that. So that's, that's what I've used. Anything else, Karen? Um, I think also uh, just going in to, um, to learn something new. Mm. It, it, it's a way of focusing the mind um, and it also gives you a sense of achievement and brings about motivation um, and again coaching in, enables that to take those steps forward and, and realise there is a way mm -hmm. and that everything can be different yeah. Yeah, and Julian actually said something along similar to that, that if we're not busy, we'll be actually start spinning the wheel, right? And mm -hmm. to your point about learning, and I, th I, I know I'm a learner, learner and knowing you guys for three years, I know that you love learning as well. So sometimes even if you don't do physically something, we can always learn, which keeps us um, motivated, I guess, to do more and not just, I don't know, dwell about what has happened, but just keep moving forward. Yeah, I think bring those two points together. Yes, is this a moment of opportunity? Yes. Mm -hmm. Therefore, focus learning. You know, why not go, okay, you know, this is the moment where I do that thing that I've always kind of wanted to do. Um, it's a, it's a, there are possibilities for you know for some people it's it's about re-entering um, the world that they that they left or whatever you know yeah. that's what's going to happen for me tomorrow actually yeah um, but the learning aspect of it has to be key I mean this, you know if we're not learning we're we're spinning you're exactly right and perhaps that's what you know, for some people, it's the new start is, is actually to kick that forward. Um, because it does more than just, you know, give you more information or give you more, a bit of distraction. It does exactly what I think you're saying, Karen, you know, it's a motivation which feeds, um, yeah. you know, the change mechanism uh, and in the most health, probably the most healthiest of ways. Excellent. Well, thank you guys very much for joining me. This is our first recorded conversation. 
I'm a uh, experience, you too, as always. Thank you. I'm very excited about it, and um, I'm really glad we've done this. This is, I hope, one of many topics we, we, can, we will cover. Let's uh, meet next Sunday. Absolutely. Thanks again. Bye, Thank guys. Bye-bye.